Always thought-provoking and informative. Forget the spin and media bias from the left and right. We know you are sick and tired of being told what to think, how to act, and what you can and can't do. Direct from the Ustream It Broadcast Network, it's time for another edition of the last Christian newscast and radio show with your hosts, J.D. Williams and T.L. Farley. Real news and biblical common sense analysis starts in three, two, one. And thank you so much for joining us for another edition of the last Christian newscast and radio show. My name is J.D. Williams here in beautiful East Texas, joined by my co-host and good friend, Mr. T.L. Terry Farley there in the Dallas area. How's it going today, Terry? It's going good. Uh, it's rainy out there. Uh, huh. I got my tooth fixed and uh, everything's going good. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, I was concerned about your tooth situation. It seems like your difficulties hit on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And every other day of the week, you're Terry Farley, you're good to go. You can bounce off the walls and everything else. But anytime it's Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday, Terry has a problem, either with his computer, his mouth, or something. Yeah. Something's yeah, up it every is. Tuesday, it Thursday, is. and Saturday. Okay, okay. Let, let's go back and look at this from a Broadway <laughs> perspective. What, ha what, what happens is if I get into a new commitment, I start uh -huh. off shining like a lamp, and then as I go forward, things get darker and darker, and one day... He's gone. Where's he gone? Go? There you go. Okay. All right. Well, now we do have a lot to cover, so we're not going to waste a lot of time on your dental problem today. <laughs> so uh, anyway, this is what we are, what we expect to cover in the broadcast. Mm -hmm. uh, we got yeah. growing political chaos all over the world, and when I say political chaos, I mean just general chaos. But everything is going yeah. to pay into play into mm -hmm. a political problem. Okay, a, and it, mm -hmm. by the way, I believe that all of this is biblical, every bit of it, yeah. and uh, we'll be talking about that as we go through. We also have, we'll be talking about North Korea, and they are actually now readying for a war with the United States of America. They're making it mm -hmm. very clear, and I'm going wow. to show, and I'm going to show you a, uh, an image today that's going to scare the daylights out of every American citizen, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to show you exactly where these missiles can hit. I'm going to show yeah. it to you for the first time. Okay. Also, we got growing Russia and China alliance going on right now as the uh, Chinese president is meeting with the Russian president as we speak. Uh, also, mm -hmm. we have Russia, Iran, Iraq, China, Israel, all biblical prophecy again. And, you know, Terry, the, the more we talk, the more we get into all this stuff, the more I am convinced that we are drawing very, very close to the Gog and Magog war of Ezekiel 38, and Ezekiel 39, and also the prophecy being fulfilled of Isaiah 17, 1, the complete destruction of Damascus, Syria, the oldest city in the world, I believe, is in the crosshairs of the world right now. So anyway, we're going to get into all of this, and I'm just kind of going to go through this really, really quickly as far as the chaos mm -hmm. part. I don't want you guys to pay too much attention to the very first one and that's gonna uh, i know you're gonna be surprised when i say that uh and what i show but i don't want you to pay much attention to this one okay and i'm just gonna start rolling these things and we'll talk about it former president donald trump's call for protest ahead of his anticipated indictment in new york have generated mostly muted reactions from supporters, with even some of his most ardent loyalists dismissing the idea as a waste of time or law enforcement traps. The ambivalence raises questions about whether Trump, though a leading Republican contender in the 2024 presidential race who retains a devoted following, still has the power to mobilize far-right supporters the way he did more than two years ago before the January 6, 2021, insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. Davis Richards reporting. Okay, I'm really tired of this insurrection talk. There was a protest. Yeah. There was a protest yeah. in Washington, yeah. D.C. Okay, yeah. that's it. Yeah. There was a yeah. protest. Yeah. And yeah. so this was not an insurrection. Nobody was trying to take nope. over the government. Okay, so let's that's forget right. that crap. Okay, now yeah. I'm speaking yeah. as a news person now, YouTube. 
I am a yeah. member of the U.S. Press Association, and I'm telling you, this was not an insurrection. This was a legitimate protest pulled off by U.S. citizens. There was a few people that got out of line. Okay, there were a few people that got out of line. Some of these people were arrested. Some of them were actually escorted through the building mm -hmm. and then arrested mm -hmm. and called insurrectionists, mm -hmm. even though they That's did right. absolutely nothing wrong whatsoever, including a prayer. Okay, so, yeah. okay, no insurrection here. But here's the, here's my mm -hmm. deal as far as the as the uh, the thing going on with Trump right now. Yes, they're going to arrest him, and it's illegal. And I'm going to explain to you why it's illegal. The situation, very, very simply, is that there is a non-disclosure agreement. This is something that goes on in the United States every single day of the year, and I'm going to bring it home to a personal level right now. Several years ago, I had an incident at a gas station in the Dallas and Fort Worth area. Okay, I fell, and all I wanted was my medical bills paid. The company didn't want to do that. I hired a lawyer. I was awarded a quarter of a million dollars in a lawsuit. The only thing was I could not, I could not discuss who it was, where it was, how it happened, or any of the specifics of the case. And I'm talking specifics of the case. And neither could they. I signed that non-disclosure agreement. I have kept my end of the bargain. They have kept their end of the bargain. End of discussion. What President Trump did is he signed a non-disclosure agreement with Stormy Daniels, or I should say she signed one with him. She violated that agreement. Actually, he could go in now and sue her, but they're trying to make a case against him, which, by the way, is outside of the statute of limitations. So, it's an illegal effort. President Trump will be arrested. Now, if if uh, people want to get excited about that, that's fine. But here's, here's the deal. Here's what this is going to open up. If you think the Republicans are going to take this and allow a former president, a Republican, to be charged illegally and they not retaliate, then you're out of your ever-beloved mind. It will happen. It will happen probably to Biden. It may happen to Clinton. It may happen to Obama. I don't know. But the Republicans will retaliate. That's what all this is coming to now. That's what all this garbage in Washington, D.C. is coming to now. Retaliation, one side against the other. A tit for a tat all the time. That's my opinion as well as my commentary as a member of the United States media. Terry, it's up to you. Yeah, I couldn't believe it when the guy said, of course, I saw the CNN tag, so I thought, okay, that figures. There was a humongous demonstration in a place called New York City. I don't know if anybody out there has <laughs> ever heard of that city, uh, but there was a humongous, and the news reports were incredible of what was going on, uh, and it was filmed by all kind of news people and everything else. And then this guy on CNN says, well, they didn't really react very much. Well, Boy, is that guy, he, I don't know what's wrong with him. Uh, okay. He all must right. have well, slept through I'm going to, I'm going to tamper that down real quick. Go okay? ahead. Go ahead. I don't care. I simply don't no. care. Okay. Now look, the protests are small. I don't care how you look at well, it across this the one country. Was not this Hold on. Can I finish a thought one time without being interrupted? Okay. <laughs> the protests across this country are small. And here's the reason for it. This is a political trap the same way that the January 6th thing was a political trap. People that show up to make these protests are subject to being arrested and having their lives destroyed for simply exercising their right as a citizen of the United States. People are not going to put themselves mm -hmm. and their family at risk. Mm -hmm. Instead, you are going to see them react in January, I'm sorry, in November of 2024. That's when you will hear from the American public, in my opinion. That's my full yeah. statement. Now you can react. Well, I, I, I sure hope you, you nailed it. I hope that's exactly what happens. What I was objecting to was the man that said there was small. I understand what you're saying. You're right across the country. And I think you nailed 
the reason why. I absolutely. But I, well, I was so proud and so glad to see the uh, eruption of people, the thousands of people, you know, horns, flags, the whole thing in New York City. So I was very pleased with that because they're they're at they're at ground zero, and mm -hmm. so they had to get up and say something. Right. So anyway, well, the the deal is is that President Trump called on this. Unlike the the January sixth thing, he did call for protests in this particular case, and uh, now he has. I want to make this clear too. He's not asking for anybody to hurt anybody. He never, yeah. never said a thing about that. He simply said, you know, that people should protest an illegal action. And I agree mm -hmm. with that. But the thing is, is that citizens are not just, you know, they've seen enough to know what protests are called protests and which protests are called riots. Yeah. And it's all backwards. 100% right. of the time, the country's getting it wrong every time yeah. since about yeah. 2016. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah. again, we are going to continue. That's just one item of chaos in where you have a leader of a country, a former leader of a country that's under attack. Well, he's not alone. Listen to this one. And written evidence submitted by former UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson to a committee working to establish whether or not he did mislead Parliament in relation to COVID-19 lockdown parties has now been published. Mr Johnson says there is no evidence at all that supports an allegation that he intentionally or recklessly misled Parliament, claiming the committee's previous reports had been partisan. Within the 52-page document, Boris Johnson also singles out former Chief Advisor Dominic Cummings, saying he can't be treated as a credible witness given he'd already publicly stated that he wanted to remove the then PM from power on Wednesday he'll be asked to make those statements in person okay now he's complaining about his situation and maybe he's right maybe he's wrong I don't know I'm not up to speed on what's going on you know, as far as what's going on in Britain I don't know all the ins and outs of it let's let it play out in court uh, as far as somebody having called for his resignation during the time that he was implementing all this stuff, I don't mm -hmm. see how that disqualifies the man from anything. So let's mm -hmm. just let's hear from all parties and let's figure it out. Do you have any comment mm -hmm. on that, Terry? No, I think you're absolutely right. Let's let this thing play out and let's see what happens. Um, okay. You know? Okay. Here's the next one. Punjab police in India are intensifying their crackdown on controversial leader Amritpal Singh's associates. After a four-day manhunt, Singh remains elusive. His demand for a separate state for the Sikh community has attracted thousands of followers in recent years. Ishan Gurg has more from New Delhi. The police have extended the internet bans in many parts of Punjab. The move is expected to deny Amritpal Singh's supporters the opportunity to plan and regroup the police have arrested dozens of his associates and charged many under the stringent National Security Act. Still, support for Singh is swelling overseas in Sikh diaspora nations. Protesters vandalized Indian missions in London and San Francisco this week. Indian officials have lodged a stern complaint with their counterparts. At home, they are urging citizens to remain calm. But with thousands of Singh supporters still active in Punjab, the state's expected to remain on the edge until the controversial leader is caught. Okay, so this guy is calling for uh, basically another another India. He wants an India inside an India for, for the Sikhs. Okay, but um, again, I'm not up to speed on this one. I don't know all the ins and outs of it. Let's see how it plays out there after him. But here's what does bother me. Internet is being shut off. So, you know, they're, the reason that they're doing it, I understand. They don't want his people to be able to gather or whatever, get information out. But they're cutting off the entire Internet to do that. And that yeah. is something uh, that can lead to a major bad situation in the future, like the Antichrist deciding to shut off the Internet. Well, it's been done yeah. before, people. It's been done yeah. before. Yeah. So you're, you're conditioned to it. You're ready for it. You understand it. You'll mm -hmm. deal with it, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that to me is another sign that biblical prophecy is coming true with the one world government forming under mm -hmm. one one world leader. And uh, I think that this, it, it's just, you, we have now been through three leaders and I'm not done yet. 
But before mm-hmm. I get before I go any further, Terry, in fairness, I'm going to give you your two minutes the way that I pro- always promise you that I will. So mm-hmm. uh, anyway, it's now time for two minutes with Terry and Terry. It is now, sir, all yours. Yeah, okay, and it's a welcome to the last Christian short, Armor Upgrade, Part 5, The Shield of Faith. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 and 11. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, Ephesians 6, 16. Above all, establishes the preeminence of each one of us employing the shield of faith. Throughout scripture, faith is the element that wins victories, and conversely, the lack thereof guaranteeing unmitigated defeat. Scripture declares, for the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, of joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 4.12. Thus, ethereal faith is revealed through the very word of God itself. For thou, God, hast magnified thy word above all thy name, Psalm 138.2. Yet, where does faith come from? In this same Ephesians letter, chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, divulges the answer, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that, not of yourselves, faith is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Faith is a gift from God through which we are saved. We cannot plumb it up from within ourselves or gain it through anyone or anything else. Faith does not come by works, because if it did, we could and would brag about it, proclaiming, well, look what I did. Okay, Terry, I got to cut you off right there. I got to cut you off right there for the first half of of his time. Terry will be back in the second half of the show, and he will complete that. And uh, I can see where this is going, and I think it's really good. Okay, I can can see where you're going there. Okay, now... I, again, I have shown you now so far three different areas of the world where you have political leaders that are being prosecuted or persecuted, whatever your definition may be. And that's the way I actually started to list this, is the persecution of world leaders worldwide. But I didn't do that because maybe, maybe prosecution is in order. At times, who knows? Okay, so I'm just saying, look at it, judge it for yourself. You have a brain, you have an opinion, don't be afraid of people, and just keep your opinion, okay? You draw your own conclusions from what what you're being presented. Here's the next one. Listen to this one. Refinery strikes persisted in France on Saturday, and more demonstrations were taking place throughout the country amid anger at the government pushing through a rise in the state pension age without a parliamentary vote. The growing unrest, combined with rubbish piling up on the streets of Paris after refuse workers joined in the action, has left President Emmanuel Macron with the gravest challenge to his authority since the so-called Gilets Johns, Yellow Vests, protests of December 2018. Nancy Kyle reporting. So Macron is McClown, in my opinion. I mean, this guy is, um, you know, <laughs> That's good. I like that. uh, you know, he has um, made some really stupid. He's done some really stupid things, sort of like the, the Canadian prime minister. He's done some really stupid things again. Now, that's my opinion. I'm not stating that as a newscaster. I'm stating that as a citizen of the United States who's free to express his opinion under the Constitution of the United States. And I, I just don't think that uh, these guys are inept is the only thing that, that I can say. But anyway, he's got, he's, he definitely has issues there, okay? Um, mm-hmm. Now, this, this stuff of uh, chaos is not just in regard to political leaders, but also of things that are going on around the world. So the first one I'm going to talk about here is a United Nations mission in Afghanistan. Did you know there was a United Nations mission in Afghanistan, Terry? 
No, you, I didn't. No, okay. I did not. Well, I didn't I did either. I didn't either. I thought, you know, uh, I mean, obviously I was aware that we had uh, United States troops in Afghanistan. Obviously I was aware of the fact that we had a president that made one of the most boneheaded decisions in the history of time, pulling out troops Amen. before we were ready and leaving thousands of people uh, behind. But I didn't realize that the United Nations had its nose in it. Okay, so anyway, listen to this one. With FSN Spotlight, I'm Simon Marks, looking today at Friday night's decision by the United Nations to renew the UN's mission in Afghanistan. The Security Council voted to extend the project by another year, but also voted to commission an independent report on how the world community can best continue to serve Afghanistan now the Taliban are back in power. The challenges are enormous given the rollback of the limited freedoms many in Afghanistan enjoyed during the US-led military occupation of the country. Carla Robbins is with America's Council on Foreign Relations. It's been there since March of 2002. It has both a humanitarian mission and a political mission to promote democracy, human rights and political and institutional reform. There's not a lot of the latter going on these days, as you can imagine, although the head of the UN mission, Rosa Atunbaeva, earlier this month on International Women's Day, she said that confining half of the country's population to their homes in one of the world's largest humanitarian economic crises is a colossal act of national self-harm. And I think that's a pretty good description of what's going on there. But with so many diplomatic missions gone, because so many of the countries have pulled out of Kabul, UNAMA provides an important political reporting function as well. That will now be buttressed after the security Council gave the UN Secretary General until November to procure a report that will assess the road forward for the international community in Afghanistan in a bid to bring some fresh thinking to the global table. With FSN Spotlight, I'm Simon Marks. And again, I had no idea the United Nations was there, but they've done such a great job with Afghanistan. <laughs> You know, uh, that I'm sure that once October gets here that they're going to give us a great report and they'll probably extend this worthwhile effort, this extremely wonderful thing that they're doing in Afghanistan. They'll probably extend that for the next, oh, three or four thousand years, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, that's their hope and desire and plan. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It, it, you know, it's, that's an opinion, it, by the way. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I think it's a... In, in that particular case, I believe it's a worthwhile opinion. <clears throat> it would be mine as well. Okay, continuing on, we continue with the chaos going on in the world. This right now is happening not only overseas, but here in the good old United States of America. But let's listen to this. Markets across Europe dipped on Monday as investors digest the news of a multi-billion dollar rescue deal of Switzerland's Credit Suisse Bank. The deal, which will see rival UBS take over the troubled company, was part of a government-brokered agreement put together to prevent the collapse of the 167-year-old bank. From Berlin, Trent Murray has more. Switzerland's government and financial regulators scrambled over the weekend to put together the deal, which will see Swiss banking giant UBS buy the country's second largest bank, Credit Suisse, in a deal worth almost 3.25 billion US dollars. While both banks now work through the details of both asset write-offs and job losses, the deal was frantically pushed through in an effort to prevent a wider banking meltdown, with markets already spooked by the recent failure of America's Silicon Valley Bank. While Switzerland is not part of the Eurozone, ECB President Christine Lagarde did release a statement saying she welcomed the swift action by Swiss authorities, which she described as instrumental for restoring orderly market conditions Okay, well, it may restore market conditions, but let me tell you what else it did. Sweden had two banks. They now have one. So, oh, man. Uh, okay, now, with them, with UBC or whatever it was, UBC, UBS, whatever that bank was that stepped in, that's a government bank. So, basically, what it would be, it would be like the United States Treasury stepping in and taking over your bank, Terry, or taking over mine, or taking over every other bank in the entire United States and saying, hey, we're here to help. You know, you've heard the old thing, you know, we're the federal government, we're here to help. Well, this is <laughs> this is the banking industry being told the uh, your government has taken over your bank. Don't worry about it. We got gotcha. you. 
Okay, so uh, if anything tells me that the end is coming, if anything tells me that we are approaching that time of the new world order where there will be one world leader, where there will be one government, where there will be one currency, this is the type of stuff that should alert people that are paying attention that it is time to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior because time is oh, truly running amen. out. Okay, uh, Terry, I'm going to give you a minute to go with that. Go ahead. There's never a bad time to accept Jesus, folks. It was good when he was walking the earth. It was good uh, 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago. It's good last year. It's good last week. It's good last yesterday. It's good right at this very moment. But just remember, the clock is ticking, and the game is just about up. You've just got to call up. on Jesus. You've got yep. to call on Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Okay, <clears throat> we've got a lot more, people. I mean, we've got a lot more. I'm not done yet. But unfortunately, uh, as is the case, we are running out of time for the first half of the <laughs> last Christian newscast and radio show. Terry, before we got on, and, and Terry and I were only on for maybe two minutes before we got going, I told you I felt like that I had... Uh, Pretty much the whole first half of the show was going to be taken up with something, and then we'll, we'll be moving on. Guess what? We're not yeah. done with that first half yet. We're not done yet. Can you believe that? I have no doubt. I mean, yes, and, you know, I can. I this sure is, can. We're, we're getting overloaded, folks. Yeah, I mean, and it's coming in fast, exactly the way the Bible said it would. The Bible said, God said, that once these things began to happen, that they were going to happen quickly, and they were going to be accelerating Okay, well, that's exactly what's happened. I told you guys weeks ago that we used to talk about things in the months ahead, in the years ahead. Mm -hmm. It finally got down to the weeks ahead. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know what? I believe we're going to get to the days. Well, we're at the days, Terry. We're at the days yes, now. Okay, I, now yes, I'm going to make another prediction. I think we're going to mm -hmm. be talking about it by the hour. I believe yeah, it's not going to be long before we start talking about it by the hour. So if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to remember one thing, that just like there's a last play in any football game, there is that last person to accept Jesus Christ before the rapture of the church. Now, once that rapture occurs, people will be saved. Okay, you can be saved yes, after the rapture, yes. but you got to go through yeah. the tribulation, and that's something that you don't want to do. All you got to do is ask the Lord for forgiveness. Tell Him that you know that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross, that he rose after three days, just like he said he would, mm -hmm. that he's gone Amen. to heaven to be with the Father, but he promises he's coming back for his church. He's going mm -hmm. to draw every Christian living and dead into the mm -hmm. clouds with him, and then the tribulation starts. If you have not accepted Jesus, we urge you to do so before you are that first person to be saved after the rapture. And we'll be back Amen. right after the break with the second half of the last Christian newscast and radio show attention podcasters influencers media personalities content creators and aspiring or existing radio personalities krrb revelation radio now offers the opportunity to broadcast or syndicate both new or existing shows to all 50 states and more than 160 countries around the world and if you currently operate a radio station we offer you the opportunity to add several popular shows in virtually every genre for broadcast on your station choose programming from 30 minutes to two hours with each internationally syndicated show adding quality content sure to grow your listening audience we even have excellent Excellent optional services to help you promote your show or station. These services are not only designed for audio use on the radio, but also include tools for use on social media, even YouTube. For more information, visit www.revelationradio.net or email the Ustreamit LLC broadcast network at office at ustreamit.net today. And welcome back, everybody, to the second half of the last Christian newscast and radio show. Again, my name is J.D. Williams, and joining me there in the Dallas area is Mr. T.L. Terry Farley. And uh, Terry, we had not finished off uh, part number two just yet, or part number one, I should say, just yet. Uh, so mm -hmm. um, I've got two more two more reports 
um, to go along with chaos in the world and also mm-hmm. issues in the world, I guess I should say as well. So let's listen to this report next. With FSN Spotlight, I'm Simon Marks. 20 years ago this week, I was in the Middle East covering the US invasion of Iraq that would eventually oust Saddam Hussein but find no weapons of mass destruction. I recall one figure in the new Iraqi government later that year assuring me that within two decades, his country would be the new Japan, a thriving, successful economy and a vibrant democracy. It hasn't quite worked out that way, at least not yet. Sir Kim Darroch, former British diplomat, with his view of the balance sheet 20 years on. When you look at the failures of intelligence, or particularly the mistakes made after the invasion in trying to uh, trying to manage Iraq and uh, fulfil that actually completely unrealistic Bush theory of returning to some sort of democratic country. But the second point is, Iraq is much richer now. The Kurds are much more independent, but the levels of corruption are Olympian. I mean, they are extraordinarily high, so there's still a huge amount of problems and quite a hangover from, from what happened with the, uh, with, with the invasion um, 20 years ago. It's estimated by some NGOs that the war in Iraq cost as many as 200,000 lives. In the last 20 years, the country has had six elections, eight different governments and seven different prime ministers. With FSN Spotlight, I'm Simon Marks. Okay, and all of that, every bit of that, um, there's a reason, in my opinion, that you're not seeing Iraq emerge the way that they thought they might, okay? (laughs) And this all, in my opinion, is because of Bible prophecy and because of what Iraq, how Iraq is reacting to things that are going on. What leaders do make a difference. What people say (laughs) makes a difference. Actions that you take make a difference. So I've got a couple of news reports here that are important. This one comes out of Tehran, Iran, okay? And this is where Iran and Iraq agree on new mechanisms to use frozen assets. Now let's explain, first of all, what frozen assets are. When Iran went through this nuclear uh, deal and Obama gave them billions of dollars in cash, Okay. Now, they violated the agreement, so they started freezing Iranian assets. In other words, they couldn't get to the money they had. All right, this is, this is kind of unique. Listen, listen to this. This is Iran and Iraq agreeing on, a new, on new mechanisms where they can use those frozen assets. Again, this comes out of Tehran. A top Iranian official said Iran and Iraq have agreed on new mechanisms enabling the former to use its frozen oil and electricity exports, money in the latter's banks, the official news agency IRNA reported. Secretary of Iran's Supreme National Security Council, the SNSC, made the remarks in an interview with IRNA. Um, following his visit to Iraq. He said that the new mechanisms will allow Iran to use its arrears currently frozen in Iraqi banks due to the U.S. sanctions to purchase essential goods. What are those essential goods? That's my first question, okay? I mean, essential goods (laughs) could be just about anything, right? I mean, uh, nuclear weapons could be essential if you really wanted them to be, right? (laughs) Okay, excuse me. He stressed that these mechanisms, along with the agreements reached with the United Arab Emirates, the UAE, uh, during his trip to Abu Dhabi, on facilitating bilateral trade through using the UAE's national currency, will help improve the Iranian foreign currency market. He added the trip to Iraq was in line with the Iranian government's efforts to improve relations with neighbors and said the previous visits to China and the UAE by him and his team all led 
to significant achievements. Here you see China's name popping up again. China's name mm -hmm. is popping up more and more and more. I hadn't heard much about China. Correct me if I'm wrong, Terry. I haven't really heard much about China in all these negotiations with all these countries in the world for the 65 years that I've been alive. And all of a sudden, mm -hmm. bingo, we're hearing about China, it seems like, every other day now. Am I wrong about that? Did I miss something? What's going on? No. No, the frequency has absolutely um, exponentially uh, graduated over the last few years, uh, you know, and so what, what it is, is people have never wanted to give China their due, and now China's taking their due, so right. that's what's taking place there. Yeah, well, plus and they, they got are it. too, boy, I mean, we uh, could spend several shows on that. Right. Anyway, well, go ahead. they also have a leader now who has been elected to a third term. And up until now, China had limited terms to two, but they made a special yeah. exception for Xi. Okay, so he's been, yeah. uh, I don't see him going anywhere. I think he's going to serve, uh, as did Chairman Mao, for those people yeah. that remember him. Um, he ruled China, and I believe that Xi yeah. has consolidated his government to a point now where he rules China. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I want to finish this this point off with, with this Iraqi deal here. It said that Iraq has secured special waivers from the U.S. This is Iraq, not Iran. Okay, Iraq has secured special waivers from the U.S. sanctions on Iran to be able to import natural gas. There's a key one right there, right? Natural yeah. gas and electricity from its eastern neighbor. However, the sanctions, which also target Iran's banking relations with the rest of the world, have made it difficult for Baghdad to pay for its energy imports from the country. In early January, the governor of the Iranian Central Bank put the value of Iran's frozen money at Iraqi banks at 10 billion U.S. dollars. So there's a lot of money there that all of a sudden it's supposed to be frozen. It's supposed to be, uh, according to the sanctions we have in place, they're not supposed to have access to it. Guess what? They just got access to it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, any comment on that one? Uh, no, you're going to make me cry in a minute. I want to get out my handkerchief. I mean, things, you know, it, it, it's insane. Started with Obama, uh, you know, and... Yeah. Uh, Okay, well, it's, we it, it gets worse. A lot of that. There's more. Well, go ahead. <laughs> There's more. There's more. I'm not done. I'm Give not done with them yet. Okay. <laughs> Iraq, Iran, Iraq security officials signed a border protection agreement. Now, remember, when I started this segment, I said, you know, the reason Iraq's not getting better is because of the decisions they make, the words that they choose to use, and, of course, how they treat Israel. Okay, yeah. I'm it's all in there. Okay, now this Amen. one, this one comes out of Iraqi Prime Minister, uh, and I'm I'm not going to attempt his name here, but the Iranian Prime Minister attended a signing ceremony for a security agreement between the the Secretary of Iran's Supreme National Security Council um, and Iraq's National Security, uh, and this was on March 19th, by the way. Uh, the agreement will also see the strengthening of cooperation in several areas of security. Now, when they're talking about security, they're, talking, they're not talking about uh, securing their countries or anything like that. They're talking about a joint effort to try and take down Israel. Now, that's my, I'm, I, I, should quanti you know, I should qualify that by saying that's my opinion. I can't prove that. But I'm going by the Bible as my proof because they're involved in the coming coalition that's spoken of in the Bible in Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39. This plays into it perfectly, in my opinion. Does it not, Terry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it absolutely does. Um, and, you know, those of us who are in the scriptures, you know, are just pretty much looking up for Jesus to shout. Right. So anyway, go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, this all comes down again to the to the fact that uh, that China has stepped in to mediate these two because in November, Iran launched cross border missile and drone strikes against several of the groups in northern Iraq. Now, this is mm -hmm. November. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Now we're in March. Okay, so December, mm-hmm. January, February, four months. Four months mm-hmm. since they got attacked. Now all of a sudden they're buddies. Something's up with yeah. that. But it also shows you that there's a lot of speed involved. Again, I keep mm-hmm. coming back to the same thing. Speed. Yeah. The speed yeah. that things are unfolding. So mm-hmm. um, do you have any comment on that, Terry? The fact that all of yeah. a sudden you got yeah. these coalition is strengthening. Yeah, well, you see, and, and I keep going, and we talked about this months ago, and I got off track on something else. But remember that passage that I, and I'm going to look it up here because I'm writing it down so I don't forget. Okay. Kings of the East, it says in Scripture, I believe it's in Revelation, the kings of the East kiss. Yeah. Okay, does that fit in with what you're saying? The I think so. These, you got China, you got China, Iran, Iraq. You see what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely, you know? absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, it just, it, yeah. it just, it continues and it continues. Now, throw in a little good news, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> just a touch, of, a touch of good news. I don't know um, how significant this is. I think. Uh, uh, it could be a great thing. It could also be a sign of weakness. Okay, so let's listen to this one real quick. A French journalist who was kidnapped by armed groups in Mali has been freed after nearly three years. Olivier Dubois was reporting for France-based publications Liberation and Le Point, as our correspondent Nabil Ahmed Rufai reports. The French journalist Olivier Dubois was captured in northern Mali by a jihadist group. He had worked in Mali since 2015 and was on assignment trying to interview a local jihadist commander when he was kidnapped. He later posted a video about his capture on social media and asked the French government to help get him released. After nearly three years, Dubois' release came as a U.S. hostage. Jeff Woodke was also released after more than six years in captivity in the Sahel region of Africa. They both arrived at the Niamey airport in neighboring Niger, after they were freed okay now again i said that this could be a great thing and you know i i think it's great anytime a hostage is released i think that's great i really do but it could also be seen as a sign of weakness if and i want to emphasize the word if if we are negotiating with terrorists that could be a bad thing okay all right before we go any further terry it is time yet again for uh, okay. for me to give Terry the the reins of this thing for a couple of minutes with two minutes with Terry and Terry you are up as of right now. Okay, so we're talking about faith in all of this. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things that are hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Remember again, God gives this to us. He gives us this hope, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were were not made of things which do appear. That takes care of evolution. Do you seek faith? Jesus proclaimed, and I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives, he that seeks finds to him that knocks it shall be opened sound too easy jesus said my yoke is easy my burden is light the prophet jeremiah recorded god's instruction uh, to him uh, in jeremiah 33 3 god's phone number call unto me and i will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not jesus said ask and ye shall receive. And why do we need the shield of faith? To quench the fiery darts of the wicked. We are in a spiritual war, folks. We are learning to put on the armor of God to fight the battle in heavenly places against principalities and powers of the air of this world, the wiles of the devil. When Satan tempted Jesus, Jesus corrected him, quoting the Bible in its correct context. John tells us Jesus is the word of God become flesh. Now we have girded on the belt of truth with our spiritual procreative essence, which is Jesus. We've donned the breastplate of righteousness. Jesus is shodding our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, taking the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. 
the Lord willing, we shall next examine element number five of our armor, confirming the helmet of salvation. We bid you Maranatha. Amen. Okay, uh, Terry, we still got a long way to go. Okay, and a short, right. short time to get there. Uh, <laughs> in the um, in the openness uh, today, I, I showed you that number one, we were going to talk about growing political chaos worldwide. Well, we just did that. We just now finished mm -hmm. item number one. Isn't so now something? it's now it's time to get to item number two, which is North Korea readying for war with the United States of America. And people that think I'm kidding about that, well, listen to this. North Korea claims that about 800,000 of its citizens volunteered to join or re-enlist in the nation's military to fight against the United States, North Korea's state newspaper reported on Saturday. About 800,000 students and workers, on Friday alone, across the country expressed a desire to enlist or re-enlist in the military to counter the United States, the Rodong Sinmun newspaper reported. Libby St. James reporting. And I can tell you that they conducted a military test complete. Uh, the, the missile that was fired had a mock nuclear weapon on board to make sure that, that they could actually reach uh, where they wanted to reach. And by the way, I promised this. Here you go. If it'll ever come up here on the screen. And it doesn't look like it wants to. I have a North Korean map here, and there we go. It finally oh, showed. It finally, yeah. finally showed up. Okay, this is mm -hmm. the uh, Hwansong 17. I'm probably okay. saying that wrong, but this is North yeah. Korea's largest and deadliest intercontinental ballistic missile. And you can see there, for those of you that are uh, that are watching this in visual form, you can see how it can very quickly strike Japan, and then it can travel all the way to the east coast of the United States of America. And if you are looking at that, you can see how that can actually travel, what speed it travels, how high it goes. This is not, this is not a joke. Okay, this is not a joke. This is something that North Korea is able to do, and they're able to do it right now. So they can mount a nuclear weapon on a missile and fire it all the way to New York or all the way to Washington, D.C., or all the way to Dallas, Texas, or all the way to Los Angeles, California, you know, I'm, whatever they want to do. That doesn't make me feel good, especially knowing that if they detonate one, at a certain altitude in the middle of the United States, and we know that Biden doesn't react to anything flying over the United States till it's, it's done it for a week or so. So if they yeah. fly it to the middle of the United States and they detonate that thing at 30,000 feet, all of a sudden, Terry, we don't have a radio show anymore because we don't have electricity. We don't have yeah. a way to drive anymore because we don't have electricity. Okay? Mm -hmm. We can't do anything because mechanics stop working. Okay? We are mm -hmm. in, the, we're in the Stone Age. Any, any comments yeah. on that? Yeah, no, it's, you're hitting the nail on the head, and um, it's the reality of the day that we live in. Right. Um, you know, don't be looking for tomorrow. Yeah, uh, yeah. Get with Jesus today. Don't waste time. And when you do, you'll never regret it. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. North Korea, again, they are a huge problem. I believe I've got a written report on it here but uh, I've got a, a bigger report than just North Korea um, first of all I do have a written report here which says North Korea has reacted furiously to South Korea US combined military drills calling them a rehearsal for invasion against it uh, and that's the reason why he's readying for war against the United States and its allies South Korea and, mm -hmm. and others also, uh, this may not sound related, but it really is in this Australia. I think uh, I reported in a, in a recent newscast that we were, we'd made a deal to sell submarines to Australia to try to counter, counterbalance China, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, this is North Korea's response to that. They say that it's, mm -hmm. they are not committed to taking the U.S. side in any conflict with China over Taiwan. They, do, they want the submarines that we're offering them, but they're saying we're, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to take your side 
if China invades Taiwan, we're not sure that we won't support China instead. Now, that Man. to me is a pretty major move there. I don't know what you think of it, but to me, I would say, okay, Australia, too, you're ready to say that you're really on our side? Let's just call that deal off for now. Okay, we'll talk about that later. What, what do you think? Well, as they say, it's become very popular. It does not pass the smell test. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But or it, it stinks, in other words. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, we also talked about the growing uh, Russian and China alliance, and there, there's a lot to that. Um, first of all, in the last show, I told you that the World Court had decided that they were going to issue an arrest warrant for the Russian president, Vladimir Putin. Yeah. Okay. So, number one, he's not really all that worried about their arrest warrant. How do I know that? Listen to this. Russian President Vladimir Putin traveled to Crimea to mark the ninth anniversary of the Black Sea Peninsula's annexation from Ukraine on Saturday, the day after the International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant for the Russian leader accusing him of war crimes. The ICC accused him Friday of bearing personal responsibility for the abductions of children from Ukraine during Russia's full-scale invasion of the neighboring country that started almost 13 months ago. Russia annexed Crimea from Ukraine in 2014 a move that most of the world denounced as illegal. Harry Michaels reported. Okay, so we know that Crimea is not going to do anything because he's been there. He's, we went to Crimea. This was after the arrest warrant was issued. He's returned to Russia, and he's not real concerned about that. But you remember how people are calling for Putin to step aside because maybe, maybe they'll get somebody better? And I said this in a show months ago. Don't count on that. Don't count on there being somebody better than Putin. You might expect somebody to be worse. Okay, here is a news report just listed today. Former Russian President Dmitry Med Medvedev. Now, he is yeah. the past Russian, but he's also number two. Okay, he's the guy yeah. most likely to step up, right, to become the yeah. next yeah. Russian president. Okay, he issued a warning on Monday suggesting that Russia could strike the, inter the International Criminal Court, the same court that issued, that issued that arrest warrant. He could, that they may strike that court with, get this, a hypersonic missile. This hypersonic missile, they say nobody can stop it. It goes too fast. Nobody can bring it down, and they're now threatening that world court, saying, we'll just shoot a missile. We'll just take you out. What do you think of that, Terry? Yeah, I think, and by the way, listen, let me throw this side light in. Did you notice in the picture Putin was standing with the one of the Russian Orthodox Church leaders? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you, don't think, if you don't think that was a political, but going back to your Sidewinder thing, uh, yeah, listen, uh, I can't blame Russia for saying that. Me I either. mean, they, they were threat. They were threatened, and they say, oh, yeah, well, guess what I got? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and they got the power to do it, and the court's got nothing. Yeah. You know, maybe they got a BB yeah. gun, but uh, but those are probably illegal there anyway. Uh, okay. Yeah. Also, um, there is, the reality behind this bromance is what they're calling it—a bromance between Russia, yeah. Russia's Putin, and uh, China's Z. That's something yeah. else that that we have got to look at here and play it real quickly for you. China's President Xi Jinping has arrived in Moscow ahead of talks with Russia's President Vladimir Putin. Beijing is dismissing international concerns over the two nations' relationship, saying the trip is designed to promote a peaceful end to the conflict in Ukraine. Richard Kimber has more from Hong Kong. China wants to portray itself and its leader, Xi Jinping, as somebody who is in a unique position to try and broker a peace deal between Russia and Ukraine. It's repeatedly criticized the United States for inflaming the tensions in the conflict by providing military support to Ukraine and not being able to bring both sides to the negotiating table. So that's the message that China's trying to portray about President Xi Jinping's trip. The challenge for China is trying to convince the rest of the world, particularly the United States, 
and its allies that that is its only intention when there's increasing suspicion and concern about China's long-term uh, implications with its relationship with Russia and what that can mean for the rest of the world and the rest of the world's ability to manage conflicts like the Russia-Ukraine one in the future. Okay, so again, you have a tightening of the relationship between Russia and China. <clears throat> they both get along great with North Korea. They both get along great with Iraq. They both get along great with Iran. And I see a growing coalition. I see Ezekiel 38 and Ezekiel 39 playing out right before our very eyes as these mm -hmm. get together. And all that the Ukrainians can do is try to give us some kind of, oh, well, we're going to beat them eventually type of situation. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Officials in Ukraine claim the country's military has targeted and destroyed Russian missiles being transported by train in the Crimean Peninsula. A spokesperson for Ukraine's military said it was a signal to Moscow that it should leave the area, which is currently occupied by Russia. The Kremlin has denied the strike was successful, though. Officials on the ground saying while the attack left one civilian wounded, there was no serious damage caused. So he said... He said, and he said, and he said, but we got absolutely no, you know, I searched, can't find any, any video, can't find any photos, can't find anything about this supposed attack that was done. But let me tell you something. If you think that you're safe in Ukraine right now, and I know that there's a lot of you there listening, you're not safe. You're not safe. And I really don't believe that... Um, that the Ukraine is going to survive this. The only way, people, that you're going to survive, the only way any of us are going to survive this world is by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Time Amen. is running out. It is seriously Amen. running out. We don't Amen. know how many more of these shows we're going to have. We don't know if we're going to have another show. And we are mm -hmm. seriously looking for that last individual to accept Jesus Christ as Savior. We hope you're listening to us right now. We want to meet with you in the air today okay we know Amen. it's coming but we know we're on god's time if yeah. you only if you have an opportunity please like and share the video if you take uh youtube mm -hmm. if consider if if youtube still has us up we have our battles with them as you know mm -hmm. but go to www.lastchristian.net that's www.lastchristian.net for all of our shows they will always be there if we're granted another show we'll be back in a couple of days if not Good night, God bless. Thanks again for joining us today for The Last Christian Radio Show. And be sure to tune in every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday right here on Revelation Radio. And don't forget to join us every Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. Central for The Last Christian Podcast. Now available on all major podcast platforms and at www.lastchristian.net. Until the trumpet sounds.